Hello everyone, welcome to Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Princess Shuri. I'm Post Malone. I'm Ariana Grande. And I'm Prince George of Cambridge. When am I gonna be king, mommy? <laughs> you know what, colonizer, just sit down, all right? Today we're gonna talk about creative engagement ring alternatives and Netflix's new docuseries dedicated to man's best friend. Plus, author and pussyhead creator Chris Sirsa stops by and CBS All Access Tell Me a Story star Davi Santos joins the table. But first, guys. But first, I don't know if you can tell, it's Halloween. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, watch out, watch out. <laughs> Spooky time. Maybe we should go and just talk through uh, why we chose these costumes. I'll let you start, Prince George. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, well, as Lucas, uh, yeah. oh my, my crown. <laughs> Prince George is an idol of mine, has been an idol of mine since he was born five years ago. Um, I've always wanted to be a prince, a British prince, and he's a style icon. I, I try to evoke his clothing every day, mm -hmm. he, um, his personality, he just, I, I, I love him. And I just, on this day when you can be anyone, I want to be Prince George. Yeah, we all so, do. So, God save the queen. <laughs> that's <Woo>! cute. <laughs> and Ariana. Yeah, hi guys, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Where's Pete? I don't know right now. Has anyone seen Pete? I'm I got Pete. you, I got you. Post. I got I'm you. engaged to Pete, so I don't know where he is. I've been looking for him, but if anyone sees him, let me know, you know? <laughs> and uh, Post Malone, how you doing? I just wanted to be sexy for Halloween, so <laughs> here we are. <laughs> and uh, did you get any new tattoos? It looks really fresh. I'll show them to you. Oh. Ooh. I don't know if I'm down for that, um, because I'm really focused on STEM, and I love studying, and... Um, <laughs> No, I love Princess Shuri. For me, she was the breakout in Black Panther. She was like the princess warrior I always wanted to be as a little kid. So I'm going to wear this for the rest of the week. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try to keep these tattoos like for the rest of my life. And I want to just say shout out to Ink Days who made this. Yes. And Janai hooked me up. She gave me like every tattoo that he actually has. I mean, look at this. That is yeah. so good. All of these. There's one is even real. body tattoos. So if on Halloween you want to hook up with a, a completely accurate Post Malone, you can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Which is your actual dream. Yeah. My actual dream is I want to be dressed as Post Malone and have sex with Post Malone. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Wow. Like a very Kanye, like, love yeah. Kanye more than yeah, Kanye. Yeah. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Maybe. In Insider released an article discussing how some couples are no longer getting engagement rings, but instead proposing to their partners in some unconventional, maybe more modern ways, such as using the money to start a personal honeymoon fund or getting matching tattoos on their ring fingers. What do you guys think about well, that? Well, Ariana knows some things about tattoos. I do. I, Pete and I got um, tattoos, but Pete and I also broke up. Yes. So and also it wasn't, it's like a sixteen million. What is the what was the ring? Ninety thousand. Ninety thousand dollar ring. Uh huh. Did you say sixteen million? I was I was the apartment. <laughs> was about, whatever. I live in Buckingham Palace. I don't know what that's <laughs> called. Um, I look. I'm not like a super traditional person, so I think however you want to get engaged to your partner is fine. The tattoo thing is really popular, but also seems like kind of like too deep or too controlling. It's like, yeah, I'm going to do this so that you can never take it off. A recipe for disaster. It's kind of like the, like the jinxing it when you get a tattoo of your loved one, like it doesn't work out. This whole article is kind of interesting because the, sometimes they say... Fuck you, okay? <laughs> it may still work out. No. Um, honeymoon funds. Um, I and mean, like, Post and I clearly feel a certain way about tattoos. Yeah. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're bad. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Yeah. I just do this because I, I have low self-esteem. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> That's really no. sad. Mom, where's my mommy right now? Well, <laughs> some of the other interesting ways people were doing engagements, they were saying like the amount that you spend on an engagement ring could be like a down payment for a car. So some people, instead of buying rings, are buying their partner's cars, which I'm all on board for. Oh my god, yeah. I would love a car. I don't know how to drive, but I think it'd be really great to just have a car instead of a ring. You don't know how to drive? No. Why not? You live in LA, too. Yeah. Um, you took the train. I took the train, yeah. remember? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, no. I The first time I tried to drive, uh, I was like, what's that on the road? And my sister was like, keep on going. It's just a bunch of sticks. And then it was reindeer. And I was like, <gasps> oh, what? those okay. aren't sticks. <laughs> That's a problem. How did your sister think sticks were reindeer? You know what? Or reindeer were sticks. I don't know. But mm. 
with um with this proposal thing, imagine if someone was like, "Will you marry me?" And by the way, instead of giving you a ring, I opened up a Roth IRA. Would you find that that's a no, fake? People doing that too. I gotta wait to get that money. <laughs> I want some like instant gratification. Right. Like when you're 65, you'll be good. I'm like, no. Do you imagine that? I've got a 401k. What I want is like a really nice car, or for you to take me to Tahiti, or like something that I shows you me how much you love me. Definitely want the ring. Yeah. Yeah. I want the ring because. Other than like a trip to Tahiti, the ring is always on you. It's, yeah. it's something you show to everyone. Everyone knows you're taken and it shows you how much you're worth. <laughs> I really, I want that. I want to show how much I got. Clearly, yeah. It's I, an, I was gonna say, I see a lot of people doing the like uh, vintage rings. Like mm -hmm. Etsy has all these really original creative vintage rings that are like nice, but not that expensive. Because mm -hmm. I think you're supposed to spend like three months of your salary or something. Yeah. 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 Which is hard to put that on someone, I feel like. Yeah. What if someone's broke, but they got love? I know. Mm. Like, and they're like, I, I'm unemployed, so my ring is just like me tearing this card out and being like, here, 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 please. <laughs> I got please. a ring. I got a ring. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. tattoos are kind of sexy, though. I've seen people do them. And I like the idea of having like a tattoo of your partner. Yeah. Have you guys thought about your ideal proposals? Oh my God. Well, I'm not getting proposed anytime soon, but Chloe likes bringing it up all the time. She <laughs> sends me rings for fun, so sometimes uh -oh. we are nowhere near that with both 25. Oh, she, because she wants a really, when, if, what, whatever, uh -huh. really nice, like, but a funky, cool, like, original ring. Like, so she, she, she would be glad if we phoned into this conversation right here, but she also wants a very original proposal. Where I she love wants how you to just be said first. we're not even close, and you're like, but she seems to send me <laughs> rings all the time. She does. It's just who she is. You gotta love her. Um, but, like, it says to be personal, yet also if she wants her family there afterwards to celebrate. So it has to be both personal to us, yet her family has to be there, and it has to be fun, and nasty pictures there, and, uh, 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 and uh, a lot of stuff I have to Sounds do. like a keeper. <laughs> yeah, I don't even like plan a birthday party because it's so much stress being like, I have to invite people, and what if I yeah. forget someone? I will never propose to anyone, and I'll probably never get married because I'm like, that's a lot of work. It's a lot it's of work. It's so much work. Yeah. I'm li I don't plan any party, so the idea of like planning an engagement or wedding, mm -hmm. I'm like, no. I'm just like, listen, I agree to bone you for the rest of our <laughs> lives until we're dust. How about that? Yeah. That's good. Those are beautiful That's vows. Yeah, I would right? like a private proposal. I wouldn't mind one just us somewhere. I don't know where. Just me, Pete. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I'm going to kill Pete Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> what about like a trip? Like, what if they take you like on, like, you go, go to... Italy or France well, I mean, or yeah. something like that. So that's what I but would But no would be public, cool. like no ba yeah. like basketball, no. baseball stadium. You don't want to do it at like an award anymore. show, oh, like, like the Emmy. <laughs> like the guy who won right. Best Directing yeah. for a live special. Can you believe that? What was that? That's Although so I funny. thought that was cute. Just me. Really? All right, just me, I guess. It's such a star fucker way to get married. I know, but I feel like I want, if it's going to be big, it's got to be that big. Yeah, but you know? that's the most attention no, that just guy's so ever got. it's so obnoxious. Like, is this about your love or is this about your five seconds of fame, Harry? Wow. 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 Don't you think? It should be about you two. It should be private and romantic and perfect. Yeah. I think it's important for people to tell their partner. So like Chloe's already told you exactly <laughs> what she wants. And so you know not to mess it up. We're yeah. only six. How are you going to get married? I'm not going to get married, mommy. <laughs> I do <don't care. laughs> Mommy. All right, now it's time for our first guest. Not only is Chrisissa a screenwriter, activist, and author, but she's also the creator of The Pussy Hat, which played a huge part in raising awareness about female rights during the Women's March. Today, Chris is here to discuss her book, DIY Rules for a WTF World, as well as her many other craftivist projects. Everyone, please put a, your hands together for Krista Sa. Damn! I love it. Oh, oh my god. Oh my. oh my god, that makes me happy. Yeah. Eve, you look beautiful. Thank you. Yes. I a love you. Like love poison it. ivy, right? I'm like, no. There's an apple. <laughs> oh, I literally just was about to be like, I love your poison ivy. <laughs> I am going to reuse it as a poison ivy. Okay. But yeah. so, so describe yeah. your costume because it has to do with your whole campaign. It does, yeah. So um, I am um, really, ins I'm doing a What Would Eve Do mm -hmm. campaign for mm -hmm. the vote on November 6th because I really want especially women to go out and get the vote. 
because there's so much that we could like reclaim in this mm -hmm. midterm election. I think. Hell yeah. 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 Woo. Um, so, and also like snakes are really sexy and we've got the apple and she took the first bite, you know? Yeah, so I just did. feel like we got to vote. Eve would totally vote. She took a bite of knowledge. She would totally vote as well. So anyway, I brought these for you oh, guys. Thank I you. Need them. Thank you. So these are hats. So they're just like kind of vamped up pussy hats. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> thank and they're you so much. pussy hats, not like Here. the knit ones. I yes. love it. Um, thank so you. tell us about your book. What uh, was your inspiration behind writing it? I have a lot of props. I don't know. I feel like I've had. I've Girl, had keep the bringing out the props. All it works. It's all yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I wrote a book called DIY Rules for a WTF World. And, you know, the inspiration came because I did the pussy hat and everyone was really excited about mm -hmm. that. Um, and I adore praise. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I felt like this guilt inside of me because I was like, you know, I'm really proud that I came up with the pussy hat, but like that doesn't make me special actually because right. I think women, I think people, we, we have great ideas all the time but we don't nurture them. And I spent like 10 years as a screenwriter, like mm. learning how to nurture my ideas instead of um, squelch them, right? Because how many of us like have a great idea, mm. but we're like, no, like I can't do that. Or like, you know, I don't have the experience for it. And so this is a book about how to nurture your own idea because I think that's the next big revolution when we actually nurture our ideas. Because that little voice that says you can't do it, that's patriarchy, so. And what are maybe yeah. some of the quick things in the book that people can get creative to do their own activism? Oh, I have a bunch of like exercises in the book. Um, I think um, I think to like nurture your activism, um, you really have to get to know yourself and what you really care about. So one of the chapters in my book is called um, "Throwing a Party" because I think being an activist doesn't have to look really serious and glum. It could actually be really fun, yeah. and you can make it your own. And so. Um, in addition, like, I, I, I differentiate between a host and a guest. So there's certain topics that I decide, like, women's rights are really important to me. I'm going to be a host of this party. Mm -hmm. But other things are also really important to me, like bees pollinating our earth, right? But I'm more of a guest at that party, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that way I can, like, sustain my activism. Because right. I know what, what I'm hosting, what I'm guesting for. Setting yeah. priorities, really. And yeah. The what would Eve do, you said a really interesting quote that said, um, essentially about the Adam and Eve, and what it, yeah. the, 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 found, the core of it is a woman wanted something, and then when she, she, she ruined it for everything, everyone else. And, <laughs> and, yeah. and that's what people often think about women, they want something. And Secretary Clinton often speaks about that. Whenever she would run for office, all, everyone would turn against her. And it's just because right, whenever she is ambitious and wants to get to that next level, right. people are like, oh my God, like you're gonna kick us out of our paradise type of thing. Yeah, so I think like, yeah, like literally the genesis story of the Western world is a woman wanted something yeah. and uh, she ruined it for the rest of us, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think whenever women want something, by the way, I totally thought you, they replaced you. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, I was oh my like, God, I was, you. <laughs> you're like, where's Shannon? Yeah, no, like, that was literally. <laughs> Who's that hot dude? I can't wait to meet him. Yeah, you're I'm embodying. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was like nudging people in green room, like, us too. Um, we can make it happen. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, but yeah, I think when women want something, uh, we tend to, not only get shut down by others, but shut down ourselves. Um, and that, to me, that's a sign that, you know, the patriarchy doesn't need to assign, like, a six-foot-four white man to, like, loom over me and follow me around and tell me I'm stupid. Because I already have that voice in my head, and a lot of women do. So how do we, like, combat that, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I do think stories are so powerful. And it's why I want to kind of like bring this old story right. to light and reframe it for us. Yeah. yeah. And that's why you're telling people to get, hand out apples, right? To share apples. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also to get out the Asian American vote because I'm Asian American and we don't vote very well, like very often. Mm -hmm. So like, but fruit is a big part of our culture where we like mm -hmm. celebrate the harvest with it. Mm -hmm. So I just think like to give someone an apple, a gift, a pussy hat, it just creates a connection and reminds us why we are a country and why we're trying to build something great together. Absolutely. Totally. And you, of course, created the pussy hat, which uh, <laughs> made history at the Women's March. Can you tell us, like, how, how did you come up with the idea for that? Yeah, um, I, um, I'm a longtime LA girl. Mm -hmm. 
And I just knew immediately I would go to the Women's March in DC. Um, so I was like, what am I gonna do? I, I really wanted to do something really powerful and change the world. But I actually couldn't come up with anything. I was like, I could march naked, I don't know. <laughs> like, and um, what really actually got me to these guys were, um, I realized that like, you know, Krista, maybe you would march naked in LA. I don't know if you're gonna march naked no. in DC in January, <laughs> like, you know? And so I was like, okay, I gotta wear like a real coat and stuff in the cracks of the coat with like, you know, gloves, scarf, a hat. I thought, oh my God, I can make my own hat. And unlike being naked, this felt like um, it had more meaning to it mm -hmm. um, because I could make my own protest gear with my own hands. Like if you think about it, um, our American flag made by a woman and that's mm -hmm. our nation's first piece of protest gear, right? So, um, so I um, decided to make this hat and the thing is, I am a beginner knitter. Mm -hmm. Like you would laugh at like how like, like me compared to like an actual knitter. And I thought, wow, like if I can make this hat, anyone could. And that was the lightning bolt moment. Yeah. We came from one to like many. And I just knew like this could, this really had legs, you know? Yeah. 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 What was the pacing of it though? Cause you made your hat, but then how did that yeah. happen? You know? Ah! Um, Sorry. So change could happen super fast. Um, um, my, uh, my friends and I, we put the pussy hat together um, in six days. Like we like designed the hat, wrote the pattern, wrote a manifesto. I called the manifesto because I wrote <laughs> it. I was just like, you know, hardcore. But, um, and then we launched the day before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And that gave everyone um, two months right. to make our goal of 1.17 million hats, which is the number of people that who fit on the National Mall. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I think that big goal was really necessary to get people excited. And also like, oh my God, those girls need help. Like they're clearly not gonna do that on their own. They need me, they need everyone. So um, I think that's like really, and also knitters, but just people in general have such a giving nature, you know? And I think so many people have told me that making these hats were, was their first way out of grief mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. the election. Um, and it's something to do with your hands. Um, I know when I write a book or write a screenplay, it's like, um, I don't know, anything with a computer, frankly, like a screen, it's just like, it just kind of goes on forever sometimes. But with these, it's like, you could see your progress, like yeah. row by row. I, I think that was really helpful to get people back in the game, yeah. And can you tell us about your idea, uh, the sea of eyes with the evil eye gloves for March for Our Lives? Oh yeah, I wish I wore them too, but I just would be totally kitted <laughs> yeah. out. Um, like I had a dream about um, people coming together with eyes drawn on their hands. And um, it's like how we can watch out for each other and also keep our eyes on Congress. Mm -hmm. And so that actually happened where like thousands of knitters made them. So like, cause originally I thought, I guess we could draw them. But I was like, wait a second, pussy hat came from knitting and crochet and we could do this with the eyes too. So. I, I was waiting for the right moment to launch them. And when the March for Our Lives happened, organized by the Parkland students, I was like, this is it, yeah. you know? Wow, um, I love that. Thanks. And where can people get these? Oh my gosh. Um, well, um, I actually like designed the fabric. So you can um, get the fabric, order the fabric in anything. This is fleece, but you can make it in denim and chiffon and anything. Cool. Um, and that's on my website, kristasa.com, yeah. Krista.com. Make sure you guys go get it. Krista, thank you for joining us so thank much. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you. And everyone, make sure you pick up a copy of DIY Rules for a WTF World, available now wherever books are sold. And don't forget to go out and vote on November 6th. Woo! <laughs> Netflix is diving into new territory. The Dog You series, the streaming platform just dropped. The trailer for Dogs, a new six-part documentary that profiles beloved canines across the world and celebrates the deep emotional bonds between people and their beloved four-legged best friends. Let's take a look. Yes, yes. Run this way. Run this way, bravo. You guys are getting ready to start on a journey that very few people ever get to see. My dog, Zeus, is trapped in Syria. I have to get him here. Since da piccolo, Ice è stato il mio compagno. Ice è il centro della nostra famiglia. Service dogs have been around for decades. So much of it depends on that match between the child and the dog. 
cada perro debería de tener su casa. I think we're just scraping the surface of what dogs can really do. Good job! I've been a groomer for 22 years. I put my heart and soul into it. It can be lonely to have the disability. We're hoping he'll be her best friend. I think he's telling us how much he loves us. Senti cosa dice lei. We needed him as much as he needed us. She is my daughter. I love her. I can't imagine my life without dogs. Adorable. So I mean, cute. I, mean, I love animals. Netflix, here's my heart. Have it. It's yours. Yeah. <laughs> I on Netflix watch like anything that has to do with animals. That's all I watch. It's like, oh, look at these two animals who are friends. Look at these dragons <laughs> fighting. You're like, what okay, whatever. Anything with animals is what I said. Yeah. And it's like a perfect thing <laughs> for aren't um real. Dragons I meant, aren't like, real. bearded, like, uh, what were the... Bearded dragons? Yes, Planet Earth oh. 2. Yeah. Planet Earth 2, <laughs> when those, what are those dragon lizard guys? See, oh, people in the audience oh, yeah. are like, I know what you're talking about. Galapagos, the G Galapagos Island? Yeah, I think yeah. that one, dragons? where they're like, <gasps> <gasps> yeah. and they like do the like, sumo, cool, yeah. sexy moves, okay, and then animals. they like, you know. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Um, I'm struggling. Sure, <laughs> sure. I do, familiar. I do love dogs. I would never really think to watch this documentary, but that trailer is so adorable. Um, my family actually texted about this documentary two days ago, saying that we're already planning to watch it all over Thanksgiving. Oh, we together. love dogs, yeah. Uh, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving in my household. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're gonna have to deal with this for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are your favorite dog movies, though? Or your favorite, Ooh. like, celebrity dog. My, my great celebrity dog? Yeah. My great grandmother's corgi just died. Oh, rest in peace. Yeah. It was Queen's her last corgi. corgi. I like my big corgi. piggy smalls. Aww. That's not a puppy. That's not a dog. <laughs> he basically is a piggy sleeps on me at night. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. He was with me, Pete. But, I love, you know what dog is, like, the movie, you know that movie Beethoven? Yeah. I feel like whenever I see that dog on the street, I'm still like a five-year-old and I'm like, Beethoven! <laughs> and the person's like, we get it, we get it. And I'm like, Beethoven! Oh my God, I'm like Post, calling you're my so friends. funny, Post. Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's every time I see a little Jack Russell, I think of Eddie off of Frasier. Did you guys oh. used to watch Frasier? He was like the best dog in Hollywood. And so every time I'm like, Eddie, and they're like, his name's Michael. I'm like, Why is the dog named Michael? <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a pic with um, my cousin Allie and her dog. Oh. Oh, cute. That's, that's her puppy. That's her puppy. Hello, Elita. What's I the heard that name? puppy oh, Ellie. swallowed a scrunchie. Yeah, remember yeah, that? Yeah, she swallowed a scrunchie one time, and that girl missed work. Yeah, that girl. That girl missed work. She missed the show. Mm -hmm. I missed the show. Um, like Marley and Me, I actually haven't seen that guy. I heard it was it's so, so sad. sad. Oh, it's so I sad. I didn't want to see it. I was like, I'm not going to see that. I mean, it's, it like, all oh. started with Old Yeller. Okay, right. saddest story ever. Yeah. Stop killing the dogs. Have a movie where the dog lives forever. We all want our dogs to live forever. Me. All dogs go to heaven. Aww. Oh, that was such a good movie. Except I know a dog that probably went to hell. <laughs> really? <laughs> Why? What did it do? Mean dog. Maybe mean he dog. was misunderstood. Max. I was like, no, no, no. I was like, you're going to hell. Everyone's going to heaven except you're going to fucking hell, Max. <laughs> I, when I heard that there was going to be a documentary about dogs, I was like, what if we find out some shit about dogs that is going to ruin it for us? Like, what if we find no, out like impossible. all dogs are like Republicans? <laughs> <laughs> all dogs voted for like, Trump. Like, imagine they were all like inside our little doggy hearts. We're all wearing MAGA hats. Yeah. Like, you'd be like. Mm, I'm a cat person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cats are going to make a huge rise, which actually kind of makes sense secretly, you know? Dogs are just so amazing and loving, and, like, have you ever seen those videos of, like, soldiers returning home and, yeah. like, they see their dog? Yeah. Or did you see that video of that dog who is on their owner's grave, and it's crying, and it's like, oh! Or, you don't you believe always it? take it to that weird. It's so sad. Yeah. Uh, death is a part of life. Get yeah. used to it, because everybody in the studio is gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Get used to but it. But that's my thing. And everyone watching too. You're all gonna yeah. die. You're all the ebony clock not is ticking. Yeah. 
That's the thing that stresses me out about dogs, though, and that's why Marley and me was so sad, because when you buy a dog, you know you're going to watch it die, because it's only going to live, like, a short amount of time. I'm the dark one. I (laughs) talked about humans dying, and you're talking about dogs watching dogs die. Puppy, what's wrong with you? Nobody calls it you, So you get a puppy, you're like, aw, I'm going to watch you die. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that's that's what I go to. I'm like, you're only going to live about 12 to 14 years. Oh, my God. Well, the comedian whose name I will not say has a really funny joke about uh, puppies and how when you buy a puppy, you're just Welcoming them, welcoming death into your home. Yeah, it's so sad. The comedian who did the jerking off. Oh. But dogs are awesome. <laughs> off with his head. What's your favorite uh-huh. kind off of Off with dog? his head. <laughs> I sent this him to die. <laughs> Yay! I'm gonna get clean. Guys, Brittany asked a really deep question. Sorry. sorry. What? She asked. <laughs> What's your favorite kind of dog? Oh my god, thanks. That's what I love about dogs. You. There's so many different types of dogs. She's making fun of me. Brittany comes really from a hard journalism background, yeah. so she can't, like, connect. Yeah. <laughs> She's asking those tough questions. Yeah. <laughs> well, growing up, I had a Doberman Pinscher, but she didn't have her ears cut, so they were floppy, and she was really so cute and so sweet. Uh. I'm going to say the best type of dog is pood- a poodle. Poodles are the smartest. Don't give me that look. Poodles are the smartest. They're the most regal. They're the most loyal. They're the most kind. Yeah. They just have weird haircuts. I will say I got, the fos- I got to foster two puppy huskies, and they oh. were unreal. Unreal, believable, the cutest dogs. But moving on from dogs to our next guest, um, W. Santos is an actor best known for his role mm-hmm. as the Gold Ranger in the TV series Power Rangers Dino Charge. Now he's starring as Gabe in CBS's All Access new series Tell Me a Story. The show takes our, our most beloved fairy tales and reimagines them as a dark and twisted psychological thriller set in modern-day New York City. Let's take a look. I wanted to get married, have a family. But the world is no place for that anymore. Everybody on the floor now! You and your three friends robbed a jewelry store. You got the wrong guy. The world is angry. I have to do something. Wait, wait, wait. It may rain later. I'll be okay. Cops brought me in. I'm not going down for that. You don't threaten me. Is this wrong? I know. My brother's gotten into some trouble. Put my money. Let him go. Maybe we'll get lucky. We're not lucky people, Anna. Crazy. I'm crazy. Everything's a little upside down right now. Why didn't you call for help? I told you! This guy, he's stalking me. You can't do this. You're not the vigilante type. Something going on I don't know about? That's a really good question. That has a really bad answer. Something's wrong. I will never go away. They're gonna kill us both. You know, we'll fight all. You're just a sheep in wolf's clothing. Everyone, please give a warm bill bunch welcome to Davi Santos. Hey, everybody. Woo! Woo! Hi. Welcome. Thank welcome. You so much for Thanks for coming me. for a Halloween episode. I see you dressed up. <laughs> yeah, um, guys, yeah. I didn't get the memo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We should take off that mask. Yeah, I have. It's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like my skull, actually. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm impressed it. by that. But you're here to talk about this new show, this really exciting show for CBS All Access, which I'm, I, CBS All Access I'm really fascinated with. Can yes. you talk to us about the show? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Tell Me a Story is three different fairy tales. Right. And uh, Hansel and Gretel, Little Red Riding Hood, and The Three Little Pigs. Right. But they're sort of taking place in the underbelly of New York. And there's no supernatural powers or anything. It's just uh, like crime, punishment, passion, right. and uh, like the underbelly of right. town. And when you think about it, those three fairy tales, though, are children's stories, actually have kind of a dark element to them. They do. 
Yeah, and that's what Kevin Williams and the, yeah. our showrunner like so uh, deeply connected with was sort of refinding what was it about those fairy tales that was so dark, and how does it apply to today? Because apparently those fairy tales actually came from the atmosphere politically and right. socially of the time. That's so interesting. And how did you get involved? What drew you to this project in particular? I mean, the pilot episode was such a high octane experience. Mm -hmm. I kind of just fell in love with it right away. The character as well. Um, I mean, just being this party monster, club-going dancer in New York, and then just having one of the worst things happen to him in a penthouse, and before you know it, he's being chased by the police, the mob, and having to connect with only one person in his life was just such a extreme situation, and um, it just seemed like a lot of fun to do. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about your character, Gabe. Uh, your story is based on Hansel and Gretel, right? Yes. Lucy? Yeah. yeah. So tell us about him, because I, I got to see the first two episodes, and... He makes some frustrating choices. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gabe makes some frustrating choices in his life, but I think we all kind of do, and that's what um, I, I connected with him mm -hmm. the most in that regard. I mean, we're talking about someone that had like these great dreams and to chase art and move to New York and like something that a lot of us have in common. Um, but we kind of pick up when he's already kind of lost into this world of just drugs and parties and getting home at. 8 a.m. after the after, after, after party, you know? And then stuff happens, and then he has to sort of find love again and, and his life. So, I mean, it's a real story, and I think that's what kind of makes it so haunting. Yeah, and what, did, uh, what was it like working with the cast? Amazing, I mean, I worked primarily, since it's Hansel and Gretel, right? Yeah. Uh, primarily with, oh, and then it turns out it took me like four episodes to realize I'm Gretel. Right, obviously. <laughs> it's kind of obvious. It's yeah. like Hannah and, and Gabe, but I was right. like, oh yeah, so Hansel, I'm Hansel. Obviously, <laughs> it's like no, I'm not. And You're like, Gretel. That's, that's so cool. Yeah. And such so, great. Um, Danya Ramirez, who plays uh, Hannah, is a phenomenal uh, actress and human being, and I'm primarily doing my scenes with her. So it's been wonderful to just um, bounce off of someone who's just like so cool and instinctual and wonderful. Yeah. Do you have any particularly like fun moments that stand out to you from uh, the, the process? Ooh, uh, I mean, it's kind of funny how an experience that could be so kind of terrible, narratively speaking, yeah. can be kind of a lot of fun at the same time. Um, like even, <laughs> I mean, even like the drug scenes, uh, just to like the first silly thing was, um, was like V8 like V8, V12, right. you know? So we just had V8 powder, and, and then so the, the prop guy comes over and he's like, look, it's V8, it's good for your joints, it's good for your <laughs> membrane, it'll actually give you a little bit of energy too, nothing too crazy, so feel free to really snort it, oh, you know what I mean? So, awesome. so I was like, okay, great, and then by the end of it, I'm like, do we have any more? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm feeling stronger. Yeah, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling great, I feel mobile, it's like seven in the morning, the, <laughs> like we were shooting in the, the, it was like the 30th floor of a penthouse on the east side, and the sun was coming up on one side, and. It was just gorgeous, and I was on V8, and it was just <laughs> perfect. That's great. Yeah. I love that. Cool. And you were also, you were the Gold Ranger in Power Rangers, Dino Charge. Yes! And I've seen you because I'm yes. a babysitter, and my favorite little boy, Geo, is obsessed with like that season, that Power Rangers. Oh, oh, he yeah. loves you. Gio, so right now I'm really no. cool. this is for you, Geo. Geo, look at me, the coolest babysitter in the world, like yeah. your favorite ranger. Oh, <laughs> He's just that man like, isn't my babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> Who is like, that man? Crying in the yeah. back. He's, He's like, like, what's what happening? <laughs> so how is it being a Power Ranger? And like, do people stop? Like, do kids stop you on the street? And they're like, look. It's sometimes kids. It's sometimes their parents. Yeah. You know. Um, and then I'm like, you don't have kids, do you? <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, it's it's great. I mean, it, it's like one of those weird dream come trues that I haven't really thought of in such a long time. You know, it's like that's what. Yeah, like being James Bond. You right. know, I wanted to do that when I was like 10. I haven't really thought of it much. And then it's like you go on the audition. Yeah. And um, But yeah, so like the Power Rangers, it wasn't until I was standing like in one of the last episodes around, um, like some of them had morphed, some of them hadn't. And I was like in this cave and there was like the lab and all the Rangers were there. And it was like, oh man, I'm a Power Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I'm the one that speaks out when I meet the ones that I grew up right. with. Because sometimes I go to a convention and then there's like, you know, my original green or red. And, and usually I'm used to like, oh, hey, yeah, it was a great time. Thank you so much for coming. And then when I saw them, I'm like, uh, guys, uh, I'm one of the Power Rangers. What are we doing right now? You're yeah, like, we're all peers. Yeah, we're, we're peers. Exactly. We're all equals. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. That's so That's cool. cool. It was a really good time. And we shot in New Zealand. 
Oh, uh, really? I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So How long like, did you have to stay in New Zealand? Eight months. Did you do the Lord of the Rings tour? I did <laughs> for a very short time because it was also this, um, what are they called when you have the volcanic water uh -huh. and mud oh, that yeah. comes out of the ground? It was really close Mordor. to it. Magma. Oh, magma. No. <laughs> magma bath. Magma. The Brainiac knows. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take over the world. <laughs> yeah, so that was really close to it. So I was ended up just covering myself with like the redeemial, um, I was gonna say magma, I swear. Yeah, like V8. The mud. V8. V8. Yeah, I'm V8. Redemial. I'm like, that's a good word. Yeah. I don't know what it means. Remedial is actually oh. what I meant to say. <laughs> okay. But yeah, someone's like, redemial. <laughs> yeah, and I ended up just burning my face because it was just like, you can't leave it on your face too. Right. Or anywhere else on yeah. your body. <laughs> Scary. Yes. And you have a film, uh, Polaroid, coming out in 2019. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you want to talk about that? Yes. So um, Polaroid was this like crazy experience. We shot it in uh, Nova Scotia. And I mean, it's like one of those plot lines that you're kind of familiar with. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, it takes you take a, a camera, it takes your photo, and then before you know it, your soul is mine. Yeah, you know? oh, I love that. Um, but it was it was found. <laughs> oh, I love that. That was an oh, episode right. from like Goosebumps. Exactly, from the exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought of too. Yeah. But I mean, it was um, the, how it came about. It was like this Norwegian director and, and writer that made a short film and then brought it to um, the we the West Coast, and they, and they won the Los Angeles Film Festival, and then for like one of those rags to riches stories, they, they got the whole film. They, mm. um, you know, Dimensions was like, you guys could direct it and produce it and we'll, I mean, we'll give you the money for it and here's a feature movie. So I think what's gonna be interesting about it is A, the cast, which was really awesome to work with and B, how it's, how it's filmed. So I look forward to, you know, scaring everyone. Yeah. Double. Double yeah. scary. Yeah. You're a scary people. guy, you like scaring people. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm still gonna like <laughs> still rip off yeah, the like, Rip out your gut. One yeah. question. Went, <laughs> like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Intestines just filling like, up. Hand just yeah. Yeah. Like, we, we admire the dedication. Yeah. Um, but this is on your the show. Tell me stories on CBS All Access, and yes. that is a yeah. totally relatively new streaming service. It is not like the CBS network. Can you tell people like how they can watch this show? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just go to see. It's like sort of the Netflix format. Mm -hmm. So a show comes out, either it's gonna be binge worthy, I'm not binge worthy, but either you can binge or you can't because it'll come out once a week. So this will come out, I mean, it just came out mm -hmm. today, Halloween, Wednesday, but then, yeah, ooh, yeah. <laughs> but then it'll come out on Thursdays and uh, you just go on cbs.com and then they give you like a free trial period for CBS All Access and then you gain like 10,000 different CBS shows and all of their original content. Wow. And what's cool about CBS All Access too is that um, it kind of allows a lot of it nurtures a lot of creativity yeah. and a little bit more edgy work too. So it's some really cool material out there. As I mean like Star Trek and then mm -hmm. us and um, like uh, quite a few shows in yeah. fact. We love that, we love creativity. So exciting. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. Woo! Thank you so much for having me guys. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. You, you watch Davi Santos you. and Tell Me a Story today on CBS All Access, that's all from us. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same table. Woo! Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yeah.